I welcome you to another video about compiler construction. In this video, we will learn why we divide compiler into front end, middle end, and back end. In a previous video, we have learned about phases of compiler. A compiler has seven different phases from lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer, semantic analyzer, integrated code generator, machine independent optimizer, target code generator, and finally machine dependent optimizer. So our input of these phases is character streams of source language. Our output is optimized target code. Now in this video, we will learn that these first four phases depends upon programming language that we are developing. So if we have a new programming language, we must write these four phases for that language. If our intermediate presentation is programming language independent, then this phase has programming language independent optimizations. And the last two phases are target machine dependent. So if I have to run my programming language in two different target machines, I have to write two different implementation of these phases. For each machine, I must write a new implementation of these two phases. So let me clarify it once again. These phases are programming language dependent. And this phase is a machine and programming language independent. So this, I just write here independent because this is independent from machine as well as from programming language. And these last two phases are machine dependent. So if I have to port my programming language into a new machine, I have to write these phases. we call all of those phases combined as our front end. So this is my front end. And we call this phase as our middle end. This is my middle end. And these two phases make the back end. Now, assume that my programming language is the first programming language in the world, then I have to write front end, middle end, and back end for that language. Assume that my programming language is called L1. So I write front end of L1, and then I write intermediate representation, but my intermediate representation is language independent. So I just write here IR. It has nothing to do with L1 because it is language independent. So I don't have to write L1 here. And then I support my programming language L1 in five different machines. So I have to write five different backends. So I have backend one to backend five. Now, if I have to make a new programming language, say L2, and if I decided that I will generate the same IR, the same intermediate representation, then I don't have to rewrite those backends. I can use their code. I can use already existing backend. So for L2, I only have to write the front end. I can use the existing code of machine independent optimizer because L1 already has the code written for it. I can use the existing code of all the backends and I can support my language in five different machines. However, if I have to support my language in a sixth machine, then I have to write another backend. And by writing that backend, the L1 
also get spored in this new machine because L1 and L2 share the same intermediate representation. So this model of dividing compiler into language dependent front end and independent middle end and machine dependent back end enables sharing of different back ends and middle end between different compilers. We have to write a new front end for new languages, but we don't have to write the middle end and back end for the new languages. Although many compilers don't use this model, but community of developing open source compilers is growing. One example of such a community is LLVM. So LLVM are tools which can be used to develop new compilers and LLVM also has an intermediate representation. So LLVM IR, it is also known as LLVM Bitcode. There are several languages that generate their code in LLVM IR and this enable them to not work on the back end or on the middle end and they can port their code on several platform just by developing front end. So I hope that you are able to understand that what are the advantages of these three components and how can we use them to reuse others compiler code. That's it for this video. See you next time.